Hi, so I'm going to talk about the the um, J-Craft guitars that were sent to me to play and evaluate and give feedback on. I know a lot of folks are curious about this brand. I honestly heard about them on the internet and folks were praising them and dissing them. So when I was when I was contacted to try these out, I really didn't have an opinion about them. My first impression was, okay, these are offshore built guitars, prop, uh, a budget brand for beginners perhaps, and for folks who like to play with modding. And these are the three strats that are sent to me. I'll talk about the tellies in another video. So the strats we have here are, this one is the S1, which I feel is the most modern of the batch. And these are the S3 vintage guitars. The white one on the left is from their regular vintage line. And the white one, as you can see, which has simulated battle scars, and I will talk about the simulated aging and wear and tear in a bit, is from the S3 Antique line. And these are supposed to be the third generation of J-Craft offerings. And I'll talk a little bit about their evolution as well. So when it came to evaluating these guitars and sharing my thoughts, things I had to consider where one, you have to consider the price point of these guitars. The, the, um, to be fair with them, you have to think about, okay, are we going to compare these to American-made guitars? Are we going to compare these to more illustrious brands? We, I'll mention a couple as we go through, and my thoughts. And another thing to, to consider is the company's objective with these guitars. What they want to do is come up with great beginner's guitars. And having a great guitar as a beginner is something that is really important. We don't want music, learning music to be a torturous experience. We want to have pleasure while we're doing it. And having a good instrument is an important thing. So I'll try to go through each uh, as quickly and not as verbosely as I can. So let's take a look at the two vintage ones first. Uh, you'll notice that the regular vintage line has a poly finish in gloss, whereas your antique line is satin matte. And at first touch, the satin matte is pretty impressive. It feels nice. I'm a big fan of the satin matte finish. Hail Satin, just kidding. And these have a very premium feel. Another difference between the two would be the weight. Whereas we're looking at seven pounds roundabout for the regular vintage line. The antique line is around six pounds, a low six pounds. So you'll feel that the moment you pick it up. I live on the fourth floor. I had to carry two of these. I'd never carried two guitars boxed in my entire life up four, th four floors considering my back issue so it was a pleasure to to handle these things and if you have a back problem like me you'll love these <clears throat> now what you'll also notice here is you've got your truss rod access canals whatever you call them they're pretty clean they're pretty neat I've seen worse but you'll notice that the edges are pretty smooth and the truss rods work perfectly because I had to make minor adjustments to these then the tuners are also pretty good. They, they stay in tune. In the couple of days I've had them, I did not encounter slippage. So if you're looking at upgrading things uh, on the guitar, the tuners would be the least of your problem. They're pretty good. The Antique series has really nice aging. So this is aged nickel. Let me try to zoom into it. That's pretty neat. You probably won't want to upgrade these unless you also want to upgrade to vintage nickel or aged nickel, but I keep them. And that's just me. Disclaimer, there's some things that I might mention that might be of my preference. These also come with bone nuts, hopefully not human. 
and rosewood fretboards. There you go. With what is described to be vintage jumbo. They actually feel like medium jumbos to me. Not very tall, but just right. With, and wait for it, 14 inch radius fretboards. So they're not exactly vintage, because if you want to be purest vintage, you're looking at 7.25, probably 9.5 for some of the more modern guitars, but these are 14 inches. Just pretty neat if you ask me. One thing I also noticed is, and this is also on the specs, these have slightly rolled fretboard edges. You usually find that feature on a lot of premium guitars. Like some of the uh, Fenders have them. And some premium guitars offer even more rolls. I, and you, you, one thing I'd like to point out is the S1 has heavily, a heavily, heavily old rolled fretboard edges. Pretty neat feature. Another thing I felt that these guitars have going for them is that they have really tight pockets. Take a good look at that. So what I like to do with bolt-on guitars is I, I like to pull them apart and see how tight the pockets are. And these neck, neck pockets are pretty snug. I make my own minor adjustment by loosening them while they're in, they're, they're, they're in tune to let, it, let them really set. It's a, a trick that a lot of folks like to do. Uh, on the white Strat, you have what appears to be lightly, light mint green plastic, which is also a cool, cool feature. And the bridge is pretty good. The selector switches are pretty solid. And these are 250k audio taper pots. And Alnico, vintage Alnico pickups that if I'm correct are made at the Wilkinson factory. They sound pretty good actually. I think um, these are calibrated in a way because I, uh, I, I kind of feel that they're pretty even considering with a bridge pickup. Though the bridge pickup is not wired to a tone knob. There you have it. Now let's take a look at the back side of this, this beauty. And here you go. Let's start from the top. Take a look at the, the nickel tuners. I hope I can get these in focus. Oh, okay, there you go. And here's a glossy maple neck. And let's go all the way to the neck pocket. There you go. And another feature is these strats have, and you can't really see them, oversized sustain blocks. I'm not sure if they're steel or if they are, there you go, pot metal. But the fact that they're oversized is a good thing because you get more resonance. I won't talk about the whole material thing in this video. This is more just about showcasing these strats. Now, let's take a look at the the antique strat here generally basically the same specs and one thing I pointed out to the folks was hey there's even a simulated cigarette mark here for all you Clapton fans and the funny thing is there's also residue if you touch it so that was a pretty funky idea if you asked me same frets same specs Yet, if you take a look, a closer look, it's satin matte, so it's not as reflective, it's more opaque in the light. And you also have the aged plastic knobs. The pickups aren't as aged, but we have simulated wear and tear. Now, what do I mean by simulated? These are obviously digitized. If you take a look at the other guitars, if you take a look at the other... The other folks that have been sent these to test, you'll notice that there's a pattern to its wear and tear. Let me lift this a little bit so you can see. Even the butt end has some wear and tear. The forearm contour and some of the, a the, the edges have wear and tear. 
the bridge is also tastefully aged. So it's not overly rusted. These have a kind of coppered feel to them. There we go. And you have a couple of scratches. So what do I mean by simulated? Ladies and gentlemen, and take a look at the back part. This is what will surprise you. If you take a look at the back of the neck here, you've got some wear and tear at the edges as well. And looks like it got ran over by something. There you go. More wear and tear near the neck pocket, near the heel, around the heel. And somebody's cat went, went loose and went like full Wolverine on the back here. There you go. So what do I mean by simulated? It's not real. Yet there is, some, there is a charm to it. So if you ask me, the whole approach to th this is, think of it as WWE. You know it's not real, don't knock it. It's obviously trying to reach for the folks that like aged and vintage and well-worn guitars, whereas your regular vintage series has a closet classic feel to them, meaning that they were probably bought brand new off the shelf, hit under uh, someone's bed or in a closet and played out occasionally. Whereas these try to go for that well-worn 30, 40, 50 year old guitar vibe, but does it in its own way. So since these guys have been evolving, I have a feeling that perhaps a next gen might be more accurate. Yet, um, think about it. On cam or maybe from, you know, from the stage, you'll see some of the wear and tear, but nobody's going to really nitpick on these. Okay, so there you go for the two vintage strats, one being the antique. Now let's take a look at the s1 the s1 is pretty cool some of the comments I, I i got from my post was oh that neck is really white you should um tint it yeah it's an option you know if it's again these are good mod modding platforms and if a more modern guitar is up your alley with more modern appointments then an s1 might be your thing it's also half the price i believe of the vintage series um, what you'll notice with the S1 is, let's take a look, still the same tuners, still pretty clean truss rod access. It's an all satin neck, which is pretty clean and done pretty smoothly. No dents, no scratches. And I'd like to say that, you know, for all of the J-Craft guitars that were sent to me, I was sent five. Um, I didn't find any dents or scratches. And what I loved about this axe is um, you've got medium, medium jumbo frets again and your bone nut. If you take a look closely, I'll try to have this angle this in a way. Hopefully you can see it. Um, this guitar has really rounded fret edges. So folks that have played some upscale guitars that have these rolled fret edges would appreciate it and these the the s1 has a rounder neck profile more more shoulder than the vintage series the vintage series have a medium c feel this has a more chunkier feel but not an alienating chunky feel it has sharper contours as well and what i noticed is the hardware is a little different here you've got solid saddles where You've got bent saddles for the vintage series and you've got ceramic pickups on this and just by looking at her i don't think we have an oversized block here so the s1 series if you ask me oh i gotta show you the back as well to be consistent with the of how we shot the vid the s1 would be a fabulous platform for modding Now, if you ask me off the top of my head, what would I do if I was to mod one of these things? Well, you know, you have different strokes for different folks. You've got people who are finicky about certain features and people who really don't mind things. 
Uh, I think these are wonderful beginner's guitars. I wish, um, if I was to compare them to a build, these occupy the area between those 90s Squires, the ones that were made in Korea. I owned one of those. And when I picked up the, the regular vintage series, I immediately had that feeling of familiarity. And I would even go as far as these guys are MIJ level if it comes to some of the appointments and the quality of its build. I would invest in a good setup. Off the box, they're okay, but everybody has their own preference. So a nice setup would be the way to go for these. And as with all guitars, even really expensive ones, I'm talking about uh, ones that are in the 40000 to 50000 price range, um, some fret dressing would benefit these guitars if you feel that the frets get in your way. There are folks that really don't mind it because of their technique, and there are folks that are very careful about the edges of their frets. Um, that would be uh, a pretty cool upgrade. And anyway, when you buy a new guitar, if you're not the kind that like that is it capable of setting it up on your own, then bring it to one of your favorite repair guys, and they'll do a fabulous job to get this, um, get these guys up to pro quality. I said pro quality because yeah, you know, if they, uh, hand me one of these that has been set up properly, and then I'd be able to play this out on a gig with no problems at all. I would look into that. Um, from your S1 would be your best platform for modding. You might have to do minimal mods here if you're up to modding. But if you're a beginner and you just want to get your chops together and enjoy music, you can't go wrong with, with any of these three guitars. So if you have any questions or if you're a little bit more curious about my experience with these, um, I'm going to shoot some videos. I shot a video of me using the S1. I'll try to repost that, and I'll also get down to these S3s. Till next time, cheers.